Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original literature, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. You may have noticed that our Paul Bunyan episodes are gone. That is because now that the Railway Children is almost complete, we will be re-releasing them in order so everyone can catch up. I did schedule the full first chapter to get y'all started, and I will just continue to release the daily normal episodes after that. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Any support you can offer helps keep this podcast going and you entertain. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks and enjoy the show. Chapter 14. The End. Part 3. And after nodding to what the old gentleman had said, and the nods expressed every shade of surprise, interest, doubt, cheerful pleasure, and grumpy agreement, each passenger had gone on to the platform and read one certain part of his newspaper. And when the passengers got into the train, they had told the other passengers, who were already there, what the old gentleman had said. And when the other passengers had also looked at the newspapers and seemed very astonished and mostly pleased. Then, when the train passed the fence where the three children were, newspapers and hands and handkerchiefs were waved madly, till all that side of the train was fluttery with white like the pictures of the king's coronation in the biograph at Masklean and Cook's. To the children it almost seemed as though the train itself was alive, and at last responding to the love that they had given it so freely and so long. It is most extraordinarily rum, said Peter. Most stronary, echoed Phyllis. But Bobby said, Don't you think the old gentleman's waves seemed more significating than usual? No, said the others. I do, said Bobby. I thought he was trying to explain something to us with his newspaper. Explain what? asked Peter, not unnaturally. I don't know, Bobby answered. But I do feel most awfully funny. I feel just as exactly as if something was going to happen. What is going to happen, said Peter, is that Phyllis's stocking is going to come down. This was but too true. The suspender had given way in the agitation of the waves to the 915. Bobby's handkerchief served as first aid to the injured, and they all went home. Lessons were more than usually difficult to Bobby that day. Indeed, she disgraced herself so deeply over a quite simple sum about the division of forty-eight pounds of meat and thirty-six pounds of bread among one hundred forty-four hungry children that Mother looked at her anxiously. "'Don't you feel quite well, dear?' she asked. "'I don't know,' was Bobby's unexpected answer. "'I don't know how I feel. It isn't that I'm lazy. Mother, will you let me off lessons today? I feel as if I wanted to be quite alone by myself.' "'Yes, of course I'll let you off,' said Mother. "'But—' Bobby dropped her slate. It cracked just across the little green mark that is so useful for drawing patterns around, and it was never th the same slate again. Without waiting to pick it up, she bolted. Mother caught her in the hall, feeling blindly among the waterproofs and umbrellas for her garden hat. "'What is it, my sweetheart?' said Mother. "'You don't feel ill, do you?' "'I don't know,' Bobby answered a little breathlessly. But I want to be by myself and see if my head really is all silly and my inside all squirmy twisty. Hadn't you better lie down? Mother said, stroking her hair back from her forehead. I'd be more alive in the garden, I think, said Bobby. But she could not stay in the garden. The hollyhocks and the asters and the late roses all seemed to be waiting for something to happen. It was one of those still, shiny autumn days when everything does seem to be waiting. Bobby could not wait. I'll go down to the station, she said, and talk to Perks and ask about the signalman's little boy. So she went down. On the way, she passed the old lady from the post office, who gave her a kiss and a hug, but rather to Bobby's surprise, no words except, God bless you, love. And after a pause, run along, do. The draper's boy, who had sometimes been a little less than civil and a little more than contemptuous, now touched his cap and uttered the remarkable words, Morning, miss, I'm sure. The blacksmith, coming along with an open newspaper in his hand, was even more strange in his manner. He grinned broadly, though, as a rule, he was not a man given to smiles, and waved the newspaper long before he came up to her, and as he passed her, he said in answer to her, Good morning. Good morning to you, missy. How many of em? I wish you joy, that I do. Oh, said Bobby to herself, and her heart quickened its beats. Something is going to happen. I know it is. 
Everyone is so odd, like people are in dreams. The station master wrung her hand warmly. In fact, he worked it up and down like a pump handle, but he gave her no reason for this unusually enthusiastic greeting. He only said, The 1154 is a bit late, miss. The extra luggage this holiday time. And went away very quickly into that inner temple of his into which even Bobby dared not follow him. Perks was not to be seen, and Bobby shared the solitude of the platform with the station cat. This tortoise shell lady, usually of a retiring disposition, came today to rub herself against the brown stockings of Bobby with arched back, waving tail, and reverberating purrs. Dear me, said Bobby, stooping to stroke her, how very kind everybody is today. Even you, pussy. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to thank all of our supporters on Patreon. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow and give us a good review anywhere you listen and share with your friends and family. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.